continue on with our ecu football opponent preview today and uh marcus crandall ecu hall of famer joining me inside the pirate radio studios on september 30th it'll be east carolina making a trip to houston to take on the rice owls and jp heath is the voice of those owls and he joins us today here on pirate radio live jp we appreciate your time how you doing today Howdy, howdy. Uh, I'm doing very good. Very good. How are y'all? We're good. We're hot here in North Carolina. It's about the same there in Texas, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, we, we do the heat right. It's, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Well, what better way to have it, JP? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Texas, North Carolina, we have a lot in common. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Good food, right? Good and, yeah. and, and hot heat uh, in those two areas. All right, let's, uh, let's get to know these rice owls uh, a little bit. JP, just for kind of first uh, an overview, the, uh, how are the folks around there inside the program, the the fan base, everybody um, accepting this move to the American? Is that is that exciting news when that came out? Folks fired up to uh, to be in a new, a new league. Oh yeah, uh, no disrespect to our Conference USA friends, but I think exciting would be the biggest understatement of the last what eighteen months or so, or a couple years since we knew this was coming. Um, I mean, it's, it's renewing one, it, it's twofold, obviously the step up in competition, but going back to some of our more regional rivalries with, uh, SMU, Tulane, Tulsa, uh, but with you guys still having that rivalry from when y'all left, uh, to come to the AAC, there's, there's a lot in, in me starting out in high baseball. I've got a lot of big memories, uh, going against ECU and baseball. Uh, in the past so yeah it's uh it's it's been so I'm trying to think of a good analogy like something you look forward to like you got that big christmas day present and while the games aren't here yet we're officially members and it's exceeded those expectations like the the christmas present better than you thought it would be they're they're really really sky high about everything going on Rice Owls in the league, and we'll be facing the Pirates this year in conference play, uh, like we used to do it back in the old Conference USA days. Uh, JP, before we look at the now and ahead, let's look back. Uh, last season, uh, Rice uh, going five and eight overall, three and five in league play. And one thing I noticed, uh, JP, a lot of one score games here, uh, games that could have gone your way against uh, FAU, who I know. Uh, is looking forward to a good year this year. Also, uh, Houston, who absolutely clobbered the Pirates last year, uh, and it was a seven-point game against them. A lot of one-score games that, if those if those go different, you got a few here on the slate. Uh, could have been uh, an eight-win, nine-win season for you guys. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, you're you're right, but we also had a couple of close wins too. I'm a big when I do interviews like this, and, and you're totally accurate pointing that that out. Uh, I'm an old Bill Parcells guy. I'm a huge Cowboys fan. Anytime y'all want to talk Cowboys, I don't know. <laughs> Bill Parcells, Uh-oh. What your record says you are. And we were what our record said we were. Like, yeah, we had some close losses. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. No excuses. How do you slice it? You dice it. We also won a couple of close ones, too. So, yeah, you're right. But at the same time, it seems because there was that eight or nine win pinata out there that we just didn't smack. We took the big whiff, the pinata, <laughs> but like with the blind, we just came up so close in a couple other ones, and it, it left a, a to put it bluntly, it left a bit of a sour taste in our mouth because we lost our last four games of the year. So it's positive on a whole because we got back to a bowl game for the first time in what seven eight years. But at the same time, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much meat on that rib, like. All right, so you get back to that food analogy. I'm a big old Texas boy. That, that we just had so much more meat on the bone that, that we didn't quite nibble at there. JP Heath joining us. JP, uh, my all time favorite football players are Daryl Green. Um, <laughs> Uh, Art Monk, yeah, you know Sean Taylor. So uh, that tells you the the team that I root for. It has not been a really fun life because I um, I was alive but missed out. Really uh, able to savor the Super Bowls for Washington in the late eighties, early nineties. So I've seen a ton of losses, uh, but I do have a lot of Cowboys friends. So I'm not gonna end the interview or anything. But you guys just, can uh, you can revisit this about the last game of the season. <laughs> yeah, you could do the Sam Howe putting it up. So I am a Washington fan, but uh, and Marcus, you were an old uh, '90s Cowboys I, fan I was, back in the day, I was, right? I was a huge Cowboy fan too, JP. So, uh, but just recently here, we can get along, right? We'll be all right. 
I, I think so. I, I won't hold it against you. You won't hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and no, I, I do like that. The record says uh, what you are and uh, and not the number of wins that Al's fans wanted. So let's talk about the kind of bridge the gap from last year to this year, uh, JP. How many key returners you looking at? Uh, how about the newcomers, losses? Uh, what does it look like from last season to what you'll see in September this year? Well, um, how much time we have? Let's see. <laughs> uh, the last week, it's been like that. What's the gift? I mean, sure, there are a couple of gifts around. Where you just kick right in the crotch, you know. Uh, Bradley Rosner, who was top five in the nation in yards per catch, he went in the portal. Um, and they lost. They got word that for a medical retirement, Cedric Patterson, said Patterson, he, he's not coming here. So there's a, a deep threat in Rosner can kind of take the, the lid off. And there's Patterson, who could go outside, but he's kind of a slot guy. Had some big games in the past. So when you're losing two of your top three receivers, ooh, going right into media day and then camp in a couple weeks, man, that's a punch in the gut. But the, but the other side of that is the biggest addition in Rice football history, bam, is uh, JT Daniels at quarterback. And uh, probably up in y'all's neck of the woods, you're familiar with uh, West Virginia from last year. He's yeah. coming in. Former top, I mean, I don't have to tell you his life story. Most people know him. But having a guy like that that can make other guys better, I cannot friggin' wait to see what he can do. Even though he doesn't have a couple of top receivers, they've got a, a lot of young guys that are untested. That'll be a big key early for me. But uh, they didn't lose much on the defense, but they, they've got some good talent in the defensive line. I won't bore you with all the names, but Josh Piercy, let us in sacks, the TFLs. Uh, Blake Vanish, big old country kid from south of Houston, uh, and DeBraylin Carroll, Dallas ISD kid, uh, state, state, uh, in the upper echelon of the state rankings when he came out of high school. He had an ACL injury, but he's coming back full speed now after a year suffering from that. So, uh, they got to get something going on the line, too. Uh, and they've got to have one back that they know that they can, can count on, too. But, but losing, like I said, two of those receivers, but having Daniels, and solid tight ends coming back. Hopefully that'll kind of bridge the gap from the departures of Roster and, and Patterson. Marcus, how about these numbers for JT Daniels? Uh, in high school, passed for over 12,000 yards, 152 touchdowns. They let you throw that much in high school? No. <laughs> uh, I probably threw the ball in high school. The maximum number um, attempts in a game was probably like 15. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Tough to get that number of TDs. Uh, since then, he has been at USC, Georgia, West Virginia, and now Rice. And you get a veteran quarterback. You got some accolades there. Uh, so I know the folks hey, are. It was a, I want to say a five star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah big time. Star. Number one guy, I think, yeah. coming out uh, in high school. And uh, you just kind of wonder uh, what that's going to be like, uh, JP. But you, you got to be excited about the prospects of having him uh, slinging it around this year. Yeah, because I'm not going to tell y'all something you, I mean, you don't know already, but having that guy that can make other guys better, like we haven't had, we've had really solid quarterbacks, but uh, one stat, um, I'm trying to get the numbers straight in the year. Oh yeah, okay, I found it here. They've had, this will be the 14th different starting quarterback they've had since 2017. Mm. So I know wow. numbers mm. don't always translate to our audio business, but think of that. That is, uh, yeah. And yeah, the 14th starting quarterback and what will this will be the sixth full season since, yeah, seventh wow. season. So they haven't had a guy that can really go. I got a buddy of mine that we do a lot of podcast stuff with. He, he is, he's got all the full stuff. Like they haven't had a guy that started more than four consecutive games in that time either. So having a mm. guy that could go a full 12, 13, hopefully 14 games, we have a foreign concept since I, I, when I first started. Rice won a conference title back in 2013. They had a guy like the great teams y'all have had. You got a dude. You got a dude in the studio. You know, you have <laughs> dude, and Rice has that dude. So let let's see if he can make those guys around him better. Marcus, it doesn't matter the level or, you know, if you're in high school, ECU, the CFL, wherever, the college you're coaching at uh, that last year, if you don't have that continuity, like, it don't matter how good you that's got to gotta mess you up, right? It, it really does. I mean, it, um, it, it's hard, I should say. It makes it – football is hard enough right. uh, to put teams together because there's so many players have to come together at one particular time to uh, make, uh, make things work. 
and uh, and when you're always consistently changing that that uh, that key component yeah. to an offense, uh, it does make it very difficult. Uh, looking at the non-conference schedule, East Carolina will open up uh, at Michigan. And Rice says, you know what, we'll, we'll play a, a dandy of a, an opener as well. How about at Texas uh, to open up oh, their yes. season? They'll follow that up with Houston coming to town. That should be a fun one coming up uh, on a Saturday night. But how about the uh, the non-conference slate? See UConn and Texas Southern also on this schedule. How about the schedule this year for you, JP? Yeah, a lot of local flavor, regional flavor, obviously. Uh, I don't want to uh, assume any education, but regionally it's a big deal. Rice plays Texas, a big John F. Kennedy speech. Why does Rice play Texas? We do things because they're hard. That's always a thrill. Uh, going in, I, I call it kind of disparagingly. If I'm being honest, uh, the state school in Austin, you know, we got a, a Rice private school. Going into those little state schools, you know. I say jokingly, uh, <laughs> anytime the, the little guys rise for the big guys, Texas, I'll tell you right now, folks, I've got my winning call already teed up. So, you know, All right. Set All right. that off. Uh, but playing Houston going up to the Big 12 now, Cougars are expected to be a little bit down. It would be nice to get a, a W from them. Uh, Texas Southern, local school, always like playing them. And uh, then UConn, obviously UConn has been, at the at the bottom of the FBS, but with what they with Coach Moore has done recently, you know they're uh, towards the top of uh, kind of the middle pack of the top of those um, uh, mid major, so to speak, FBS schools. So uh, that'll be a home game for us. And then we just get Rip Roaring. I think yeah, it's the next week, right? Against you guys, yeah, um, yeah. The week after we play off, we uh, host UConn. So a little mix of everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're going to have a, a tough non conference slate there. Yeah, so again, JP, going back to last year, you guys uh, hovered around that 500 mark uh, throughout the year. And then, um, man, it seemed like the wheels fell off at the end of the season, right? Um, can you pinpoint what what happened at the end of the season for you guys to go on that, I want to say, a three- to four-game skid? And uh, how is that going to affect you guys going into Texas this year? I, I think, in a whole, it, it's again, it goes back to that, that first part, hey, you are what you are. Uh, they had some injuries. Hey, boo-hoo. Oh, yeah, Crimea River, right? Everybody has injuries. Uh, but their run defense uh, really hurt. In the uh, bowl game against Southern Miss, Frank Gore Jr. had the most rushing yards ever for a back in a bowl game. So that that kind of summed up what kind of the last half of the season was, where they just gave up too many yards. And it, it wasn't like they are beating them outside. or It was just straight up the gut. Um so they had the blowouts mixed in there against Western Kentucky and UTSA towards the end. But, again, also the, the Charlotte game really was kind of that, to go back to that pinata uh, metaphor, it, it took the wind out of our sails because Rice, I think, was a 17, 20-point favorite. They lose by about that much. So they've, uh, they've got to stop the run better. And I think having guys back and be more consistent at the quarterback position, which we already went in depth gushing about JT Daniels, that'll – That'll help him out. And, and Daniels, 0-2 against Texas in his, uh, his hmm. time with uh, Georgia and um, West Virginia. So maybe he can uh, flip the script. be nice to, to beat the Longhorns in the first one. They, they've got to run the ball also a lot better. With, with Mike Bloomgren has an on. Marcus Tuiasasopo, the old oh, yeah. Washington star, uh, he's the OC. And, and they're forming, they're stretching things deep a little bit. That's what I'm going to see with Rajnick on, how that affects things. Uh, but having Tui, we call him, with JT Daniels, how does that mix with having a guy that can uh, really operate his offense? But they, that starts at the football 101. That starts with running the ball. they got a guy named Juma Odoviano, six-year guy. Uh, Dean Connors, uh, who had some flashes last year but didn't see extensive time in the backfield. Uh, so that'll be my key. The, the stop in the run, and they've got to run the ball more consistently. J.P. Heath, play-by-play voice of the Rice Owls, joining us. J.P., a couple more before we let you go. If uh, you look at the odds, and it, it seems like there's kind of a big four at the top of the AAC this preseason pick to win it, the defending champion Tulane with the magical year they had last year. Also, SMU, Memphis, and newcomer UTSA. And, you know, I kept an eye on the, uh, the Roadrunners last year being in the top 25 the season they had. I think they can come in here and, and win it year one. How about you? Uh, what, what kind of team uh, do they have there in San Antonio, and do they have enough to, to win it their first year in the league? Yes. Quick answer, yes. I, I You're going to catch me lying here. 
I'll lie to you and say whoever is picked as a preseason favorite, that's who I voted for. I think I picked – no, 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 I got – I remember now. I picked Tulane, <laughs> and then I had I had UTSA right behind them. Yeah. Uh, UTSA is big. They're mean. They're fast. Like you love and Jeff Trailer, and and I'm not breaking any new news that Texas football is fertile recruiting ground. But man, he he can coach. He signed a three million dollar deal. I forget the terms of it, but he is a leader of men. He's deeply entrenched in Texas high school football. And Frank Harris. Uh, I didn't. I guess they release that next week. We go to media day or next couple weeks. But Frank Harris, a quarterback, is really, really good. They they just lost Franklin, their stud receiver, to Ole Miss. Another one of the portal portal guys that affects everybody. But they'll be they'll be fine. They got Frank Harris back there at quarterback. Um, but he, they're really they've been a really deep, solid defense. They turned out some NFL guys on the defensive line. But yeah, that I, I picked Tulane just because hey, they deserve that respect. Uh, but I don't know any of the too deep to the. I've read the football preview, right. but uh, UTSA really, really, really good program. JP, I will wrap it up here. Uh, is this a six plus win team? Uh, when you look at it on paper, do you think Rice can win uh, enough to get to a bowl? What kind of year are you expecting this year for the Owls overall? Are you bugging my phone? Do you know what I talk with about with everybody? Me and my buddies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think so. I think so because. Uh, we mentioned the non-conference slate. You got to win one against in the first two. So it'd be nice to go one and one against TSU. So you're going into conference play at South Florida with a winning record. Um, but I think I read a note that Rice is favored in nine of its 12 of its uh, regular season games. Man. Um, so, yeah, I'll say it, and that's the expectation. Um, our athletic director, Joe Calgard, is leaving in a couple of weeks, but reciting a line of his, and, and Coach Bloomberg, he said the expectation is to, uh, com- in the long run, compete for conference championships, but be a consistent bowl team. So I think now that they've got that little bit of that taste uh, moving on for the next year, uh, definitely think that's the, that's the expectation. And uh, they, they have a little bit to say with it on the field, so I uh, can't wait come comes to him jp uh i'd like to just have you on the talk sports you're a very entertaining energetic guy i don't know how much cowboys talk i could stand but uh you guys I, can go back and forth <laughs> yeah you know, i do enjoy time. uh just talking to you you uh <laughs> very energetic man i uh, had a lot of fun talking with you today no i appreciate y'all uh cowboys uh and washington game week or week let's do it we can have, <laughs> we, we can pick it up because i get my wife is in the other room. She can hear me yelling across the house. She she can testify. I get way way too in uh, to my Cowboys, but I am so negative. I'm a positive in life guy, but negative with my sports teams. I just any, anyway. That's a whole. I thing. can totally relate. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're saying right now. Oh well, God. hopefully for you two, that um, the last game of the season this year is a meaningful one. Yeah, I would love that. You guys are in the playoff hunt or yeah. already in or whatever, battling for the number one spot. And we got another Thanksgiving date this year, yeah, too, I go. believe. So uh, yeah. that'll be fun. Back, yeah. JP, we'll, uh, we'll certainly get you on a uh, week of the Rice game and talk more Owls football with you. We appreciate you joining us and uh, had a blast, man. Have a good rest of your summer, and we'll catch up with you again in the fall. Yeah, for sure. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. All righty. There he is, JP Heath. And, uh, Good old, good old Texas boy, Marcus. He was an entertaining guy. Yeah, I love the energy, man. Yeah. Love it. And I bet he is wild uh, during a, a Cowboys football game. I can no imagine. Doubt. And once again, we do these uh, these chats, and everybody's talking up their side, of course. But now I'm worried about Rice after that conversation. Like <laughs> JT Daniels well, throwing it all over the place. Well, he said their preseason pick to win nine out of the twelve. That so they would be favored in nine favorite, games. Favorite yeah, in nine games. So you got. Texas is a loss. Yeah. Probably Houston. Houston and, and then SDA, UTSA. UTSA. Yes. Yeah. So they're saying they're going to beat the Pirates. That is that's, that's uh, the word on the street. That's Hey, look. Go tell <laughs> Mike Houston what they're saying, Marcus. All right. Let, let's poster it up. Exactly. Exactly.